their pocket in game number two. SK Telecom on the blue side this game. Gragaspan once again. Even though Bengi has been looking actually pretty mechanically sharp on that champion, Wisdom has been such a playmaker early in the game on the Gragas. Smart not to give it up. So Callista, of course, coming through. Bang. Yeah, speaking of professionally undefeated champions, there's another one for Bang. Has never lost a game on Callista. Just feels like SKT are banning away champions. They're not looking to first pick, and they don't want to give away in the first rotation. I notice your surprise at the Victor ban. They clearly don't want to first pick it, and they're just conscious that it feels like Ku will pick it up first rotation. Janna ban, too. Very unusual. As the Rise is banned out on the blue side by SKT, and there is the Alistair. So two bans against Wolf, seeing if they can do something else in that laning phase and perhaps a 2v2. But you have to feel like Bengi's happy to opt into Rek'Sai versus Evelyn once again. This is a matchup that, of course, Watch struggled with on the Evelyn side. In general, Evelyn, newly predictable due to the play of Rek'Sai, but very powerful bottom lane locked in with the first two picks from Ku. Yeah, huge all-in lane. Sivir and Annie very easy to gank. They don't have to be worried about the jungler. Bengi's faces back during champ select. Uh, Becky is my favorite player to watch during Champ Select because he always just does the weirdest stuff. Always seems very perturbed and just <laughs> deep in thought. <laughs> so Corky will be locked in, of course, for Bang. And now, how is Ku going to respond? I would much rather see an Echo here, something that you could really set up with after the anti stun, try and create some uh, zones with stuns in this game instead of going for the Evelyn. Wisdom is for sure a good Evelyn player, but it's just not as powerful against the Rek'Sai. I feel like you leave the last pick uh, to the top lane. I know that might sound crazy, but you don't want to open up. For example, you could go for Maokai and Echo if you wanted a really strong synergy yep. between the top lane jungle. But then, of course, you open up the Fizz if you take it earlier. And Leona is actually locked in by Wolf. This is a change. This is a very big change, as a matter of fact. So that Leona lock Something we haven't seen this season so far in Champions. Wolf has played it in the past. Is uh, it a blocker pick to the likes of Varus that, of course, Kuro has been playing? You know, any of these long-range poke champions? You would think that Braum might be better for that, though, is the thing. Oh, I mean, you're forced to be more accountable when the Solar Flare is being thrown out. You can't just sit back at a thousand ranges. Uh, Varus, of course, at max, max range you can, but in general, you're denied from a lot of things. But they must think a mobile backline is going to be the way from Ku, because otherwise, why would you prioritize so early a second rota rotation, Leona? Reminder that the Ezreal is available, too, the Rune Glaive as an SK Telecom. Now, they, the Leona is a partial answer to that, but I don't think it's really a great one uh, as a whole. So they need to deal with this Ezreal. And Ku have, they have Annie and Maokai. They will be able to, and they have the flank, they have Sivir. They have everything they need to lock down Ezreal if Faker picks it. You have to think, that the Ezreal's coming in. Now, how has SKT dealt with this in the past? They had Maokai. They played mid lane Rise. This game, they banned mid lane Rise. Is it global time, is the question. Is there a, I think it is. Thinking about I the think, Shen as well. I think the answer for them is go global, play the side lanes, and prevent SK or Ku from grouping with a very strong poke composition. With the clan summoner change, you have to think it oh is boy. likely to be the Azir. Definitely not one of Faker's strongest champions. Feels like Easy Hood might edge ahead on that particular champion while we saw so much from last season. And the response is an insta lock Kassin. And what a great situation to lock in Kassin when you already have the silver for wave clear. And this is a really high win rate champion for Kuro. 4 0, 23 KDA Kassin this season. His Kassin's been very impressive. And it is a good matchup against Azir. Very my, good. my concern, Papa Smithy, is that we saw what happened when Ku lost control of mid lane early and SKT just choked the life out of them in the game. And we've seen how when teams like Najan try to play the Kassin in, the lack of an early game means that against Azir and Corky, you start setting up that 4-1 split, that siege in the mid game, you're going to lose a lot of towers. And it's going to take so long for this Kassadin to come online. I don't think the Ku Tigers are going to be able to weather the storm of SKT. Let's compliment Ku for the one thing they pulled off. They know they had, they knew they had a really tenuous matchup in top, which of course is actually mirrored here, the Maokai versus Fizz. And they set up the Maokai to actually be ahead of where we expected. With the roaming of the likes of Annie, if Wisdom's on point with the Evelyn, there is enough pressure to rotate through mid lane that maybe they can make it work. But as you mentioned, playing on a Razor's Edge against SK Telecom, do it at your own peril. I just feel they're making the exact same gamble they made last game, and it just didn't pay off. So it's really going to be up to Gorilla. If they can kill Faker early, maybe 
they can pull this out and they can get the Cassidy into a good state. But if they can't, could be just a repeat and a quick one for SKT. Let's get into the game and find out. Game two, SK Telecom T1 versus the Koo Tigers. Somebody's best of three win streak will be broken. Koo's Tigers game win streak ended at 13 just a few minutes ago. And who's going to take this one? This is exactly the opposite of what I thought Koo was going to do. Exactly the opposite. I thought they were going to go for the wave clear mid laner, try and go for some more aggressive uh, champions in the laning phase. At least they have the Sivir Annie versus the Corky. That's pretty nice to have if they end up in standard lanes. Sivir Annie against the Corky is Bengi. Face checks them out, kind of bit of damage, but SKT, they very much rate their level one because they're going in aggressive. They have five people. There's no more stun. It was used just on Bengi. There's going to have to be a flash. Smev takes it. Ignite used by Wolf, but that was dangerous for Ku. Gorilla just using that stun early, and then SKT piled on through. But you were talking about the Siva Annie and the fact that they should win the 2v2 lane matchup. That's where the good news ends for this Koo yeah. Tigers lineup. Fizz versus Maokai, a famous Fizz counterpick matchup against the Maokai. Rek'Sai versus Evelyn. Every time we see this matchup, unless the team really plays well as a unit, Rek'Sai's going to come up ahead just because so she's so much more able to make the Evelyn accountable in a sort of skirmish situation. And it's Cassidan who... He's, he's going to do capably against the Azir, but until the later levels, can't really boss him around. Yeah, and that's the key point here. When we get to Corky and Azir's power spike, and we have to see what exactly happens in that particular situation when they start to group and seed. And <laughs> that was pretty much your face as we were uh, in that champion select. That was, that was my face in the champion select for sure. <laughs> Looking at it upside down, didn't make it any better reading for Ku. I mean, it has to be Wisdom, right? This is the guy they picked for early pressure. Unless he can create that early pressure, we're going to be talking about a Trinity Force power spike, Azir getting some items, and Kasten still going to be powering up with the Rod of Ages. Yeah. Well, they're going to get their top laners up into that top side right now. Marin has blue buff. Marin level 2. Smeb still only level 1. So not an auspicious start for Smeb if he wants to maintain an even lane in the early game. Wasn't able to create any saplings because had to use his flash yep. on the invade. So much. The fact when you're out jungled at level 1 by a Fizz as Maokai lets you know that SKT made the smarter rotations at level 1. Yeah, they certainly did. Nice invade there, of course, on the Raptor side making sure for the second game a row, in a row that Smeb couldn't actually get any kind of advantage. So now, just with that, they have an edge in the 1v1 in top lane, and they're trying to compound that with the blue buff at the moment. And there's no lane swap, so this, gr I mean, Gro's gonna have to be very creative about how he tries to kill Faker in the mid lane, especially through that cleanse. Commended Ku on having strategies around keeping Maokai up. Remember, he had blue buff in the 1v1 matchup in bottom lane. Now he's against a blue buff in the 1v1 matchup. So he didn't get the lane swap. The enemy laner has blue. Marin usually will only get ahead on Fizz around levels 5 to 6, but even at level 3 with blue, big laning advantage against the Maokai. Yeah, you're looking at the 21 and 1 from Bang. That's actually just in champions. Uh, if we include international competition, he's 26 and 1. Uh, so that is a little bit skewed. Prey, obviously, with a higher deep damage per minute. They usually rely on Prey as more of a damage threat than SKT does with their AD carry when they have Faker and Marit on the team. So it's a little bit different in who has to step up and put on their carry pants when the game starts. But for all that reliance on uh, Prey, an interesting stat I came up with is that 10 minutes, and this is probably expected in the best team in the league that's only lost two games, Bangs ahead 127.7 gold in his opponent, by far the highest in the league. You might think, okay, Ku's been winning a lot of games. They look on Prey to carry. He might must be at least, you know, comparable to that number. He's actually 54 gold down. Second bottom in the league, only above Nuclear from Spenu. Actually below, for example, Sungyun from Anarchy. His laning phase this season. Okay, Gorilla likes to pack up and leave, but they haven't been going. Ideally. All right, Bang actually going to get 
Uh, stunned up here, has to use the heal, has to use the flash. There we go, and Prey will get first blood in the 2v2. That is the danger of this Sivir and this Annie together, but it looks like Wolf will pick one up in return, gets the ignite and the kill, but that is a favorable trade for sure for the Koo Tigers. Prey and Gorilla going aggressive early, landing the necessary stun, and all summoners except for Wolf's flash blown in that lane. I guess the one thing we overlooked in Champion Select is that Leona has always had a favorable laning matchup against the Annie. Isn't gonna be, so when you're Annie, you can choose to just burst down the squishy supports. Leona, definitely not the definition of squishing. It's very tanky, also amplifies damage, and Corky Leona, this is an old bully lane where you'd be able to rapidly apply that Leona passive with the Gatling gun. So. Looks like they just want to duel 2v2. Maybe that's why we see the standard lanes. They're very happy to opt into what proved to be, for a lot of lanes, a very tough 2v2 lane matchup to come up against the Siva Annie. Yeah, well, interesting times that uh, you're right that Ku would actually pull out with a victory there. We didn't see the start of the engagement or uh, which abilities were on cooldown. Probably Bang misplayed something right there, which is why we saw that trade go. But Marin is being very devious and freezing the lane very close to his turret, making it as difficult as possible for Smeb to survive. Smeb has done a good job of holding his own in this matchup, at least in the last game, but you know, Papa, I'm not sure I opt into this one if I'm the Koo Tigers. Baron's been so dangerous in this matchup. You know, they gave him the tools to succeed with the blue buff. Now he has the deep freeze. Of course, Smeb does have good range pushing options with the arcane smash and the sapling, but this matchup's only gonna get worse and worse for Smeb, so that's why it's important that Prey picked up the first blood, got some sort of an advantage rolling in bottom, because they will not be able to look to top for any sort of advantage. This wisdom can really make something happen. Yeah, they're trying to prompt the all-in with Marin hitting six. Smeb gonna hit six at the same time. Start using his ult. Marin no mana, though, so very unlikely that it's going to be an all-in, and so that'll be just a push straight into the turret. Marin has to go back eventually, but in the meantime, actually, he's lost all his pressure without that mana. He has a lot of money, but he's going to lose some CS in the end uh, because he's just not going to be able to push this lane out versus this Maokai at this point. So I noted your fatherly-like disapproval of the Kassadin pick and the lack of wave control. Surprising that Kuro has kind of amplified this, not going for the Blasting One start that we see a lot of laners pick up, say, Blasting One Sapphire Crystal, Blasting One Ruby Crystal, just to have some semblance of pushing ability, maxing that Force Pulse against Azir you seed even more laning control over to Azir when he opt into the Catalyst first. Yeah, I, I would love to see how much Faker's damage Faker's actually been able to chip off the mid lane turret, if any. Kuro actually has been doing a good job of bullying. We have seen Faker at relatively low HPs. So then why the Catalyst? Yeah, great, great question. I wonder the same thing. Maybe he just wants to play a little bit more passively now that level six has come down for Faker a little bit more concern, perhaps, with ganks from Rek'Sai. But Kuro still just holding back to the turret, using that catalyst for the sustain. But fortunately for Kuro, hardly any damage on the mid lane tower yet, so it's definitely not going bad for him. But he's got a long way to go. That's the problem. You need to get two to three core items on Cassidy and before he becomes useful whatsoever. So we talk about wave control. We talk about the lane control that SKT's picked for. You might not see it from the CS, but the Observer was smart and showing. Just because there's no lane pressure uh -oh. from a Cassidy early, as we're waiting to see if... Oh, oh. Well, actually steals it away. Very nice. 50 gold comes through, but the pink wards are sticking because cassidy has been pushed up, because Maokai has been forced to be accountable. The vision around the river is massively in the advantage of SKT. Well, as usual, right? That's yep. uh, something that is almost always true of SK Telecom. Pink wards on either flank for Faker, so that he can start to move this needle and start to get some more gold. Kasten's actually been forced to max the Force Pulse first. He's actually, sorry, the Null Sphere first. Ooh, so he's a very good. defensive choice. The wave clear with Blasting One, maybe that's why he's gone for the Catalyst. It's, it's just completely that he wants to stay in lane and stay healthy rather than having any hope of trying to control the lane with maxing Force Pulse, which is what we see basically 100% of the time ever since the last round of changes to Cassie. Yeah, indeed. So, Wisdom still on the top side here, clearing out the Krugs. He's trying to be there in case Smeb needs him. You can tell that Wisdom is totally playing around Smeb this game. Meanwhile, Bengi much more concerned with Faker's safety in the laning phase and his ability to push and start to take out some turrets. Pretty passive early game so far. Bengi just going to sweep out a ward with the pink. Bottom side, River. Prey and Gorilla are here still. 
And they are not having any troubles in terms of farming, but we just see a slight edge opening for SKT, mostly thanks to CS leads in the top and mid lanes. A slight edge with an earlier power spike is the asterisk I have to put next to that. I mean, Dragon's won't become easier as Bang starts to complete items towards his Trinity Force, but there's just no, I mean, no way for Wisdom to even get close to this area. He's going to face check it now. Well, he's going to see it. What can he do here? Can he make a play? He doesn't have pressure in mid or bot, and he can't get there, and he gets seen with the tremor sense. Clever from Bengi just to pop underground right as that goes down, but that's going to be a dragon handed to Ku. Wisdom swaps into the bottom side, and there's no chance of aggression for Marin either because Maokai's so close to his turret, so there's really nothing that could be taken. I mean, it was smart of Bengi just to go underground right before he was within smite range to make sure that wasn't going to get stolen but it gets stolen anyway. Very fortunate pathing time from Wisdom. He just happened to be there. And as you mentioned, because he was doing the damage in the um, unborrowed form, he was able to, Marin takes a nice little burst, but he was able to, you know, be deceived until the last moment, as you mentioned. Smart of him to borrow, get the information that Wisdom was around at the cost of the dragon, but perhaps not the biggest concern 11 minutes into the game. All right, Gorilla's here. There's the twisted advance. Marin is going to dodge that. Fish goes down. There's the Timbers. Do they have the follow-up? Smeb has no mana. Has to flash Arcane Smash. Gorilla gets the kill. No Ignite needed. And that is some more help for Smeb. They really have been camping for him in this series. And they're rotating around him with the directed, targeted CC. Good engage by Gorilla. Unique thing about top lane Fizz, doesn't get to max the Playful Tricks to first, so much more counterplay, 15 base seconds on that cooldown, and able to get caught, as I can see that a Nashor's Tooth straight up has been completed by Fake. We have not seen this item on an Azir in, in quite some time. That's not a Stinger, that's a Nashor's. Yeah, I know, that's very, that's very odd, actually. As far as I know, it doesn't apply on the Sand Soldiers. That was, of course, the interaction with the PBE that really uh, merited this item. Is that, of course, gave you the 20% CDR and made those Sand Soldiers do insane damage. There's a reason that people stopped at the Stinger, is that you didn't get the extra on-hit damage on the Sand Soldiers. So, curious first buy. So much instant pressure, though. And, of course, Kuro has the Rod of Ages and has to uh, deal with that stacking time. Uh, I think this is just a buy against the Cassid and something that he's prepped so that he can get more damage down and clear the waves. Uh, pretty casually here, but it is quite curious indeed. A Null Sphere Max Cassidan against a Nashor's Tooth or Rush Azir. This certainly was not the smart tip by anyone for this no, series. No, 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 not at all. Well, they're standing in a ward there. Looks like there's a ward bug. They can't actually tell that Koo Tigers can see them right now. Uh, Gorilla does not have... Okay, there we go. And they're going to go in with the Solar Flare. TP's coming in. There's no... Uh, actual really resistance here from the Koo Tigers. Brave's gonna get caught out, has the spell shield up, it goes down, but there is the Fizz with the fish. Kuro down, can Kuro clean this up? They're all low, Smeb still here. They can maybe re-engage this, but Faker coming in for a possible dive, just coming in from behind. Two versus five in the bottom lane. And looks like Smeb and Kuro gonna have to go back three for nothing. That was a really weird vision. They had the vision advantage, though, Monty, from that vision bug, as I, you mentioned. I don't know if they knew they were there or not. I don't see why they would be in range of a solar flare without the Tibbers up, if that was the case. Well, the scary thing to me was, let's say they did opt into it. They lost the trade 3-4 with the extra information. One thing I'll note, Maokai was the first to channel his teleport. It looked like they had some semblance of idea, but a massive win for SKT and Kuro, taking a lot of damage from Fakers. Nashor's Tooth, uh, Azir. Wow, this is, that was a quite odd fight. It, I mean, Gorilla gets caught out very early on and they don't have a really good way to respond to it. Gorilla just dead before he can do anything. There's the TP channel. And yeah, Maokai by far has the advantage with the teleport, but still, Prey is so low at this point. Mara can just choose out Wisdom, knowing the other two members would fall. Three for O. Oh. We're only speculating. It looks like maybe there was no vision granted whatsoever by that ward as we come to live. Today. And so is Gorilla. Now Marin going to pursue this under the tower. Easily taken with the help of the Chilling Smite. Faker actually pushing the Sand Soldiers through to secure the kill for himself. Not sure how Cassid had managed to die there with both summoners up. More and more junglers are opting into this Evelyn versus Rek'Sai matchup. And I'm sorry, it does not work out. We're going to see the replay. All right. Ooh, hasn't used any CC yet. Okay, of course, the CC train, well known. My goodness. Oh. 
Wow, the knockup into the the uh, the Rek'Sai knockup, just a perfect combo. And that's been what's so scary about SKT in this series, is how well they chain their crowd control together. It is nearly flawless. It was a stun into a bouncy castle into Dan. Wow, that very good coordination around all of their CC abilities. You might be forgiven for thinking this is a replay of game one because they've taken that out of turret early once again, two out of turrets down, Evelyn getting invaded. And just how do you get back into this game if you're Koo? This is what you mentioned the moment we saw Kasten locked in. The downside of the Kasten pick is you're never going to have any hope of controlling waves around mid lane if you're the Kasten team. I mean, the, the edge you have is maybe you can get to a roam just a little bit faster thanks to your rift block, but it does cost a lot of resources, a lot of mana to make that happen. And the vision advantage again, just total control. And this game, it's not like the last one where Smeb and Marin were relatively even. This one, it is Marin 30 CS up, two kills up, and starting to get quite scary on that Fizz, even though he went for the Merc Treads home guard early here. And even though in the previous game, Smeb was picking up the kills, he was actually consistently 25 CS down. So the CS difference, as you mentioned, is about the same, but the gold difference is that Marin is going to be markedly ahead of his opponent, as Ku once again. Their only strategy this game has been camp Marin at every opportunity. Yeah, here they go. There's a silver old pop bar in a world of hurt. Can they give it over to Smeb? They can. One last punch to the fish's face. And he goes down. So they're going to try and turn this into a turret. Seems like they'll be able to. Sacrificing the dragon. Smart move from Ku. They got the first dragon here. What they need is that immediate goal to just kind of bootstrap them back into this game. Pick them up. But Bang responding at a tier two means Kuro going to have to go clear this one out. Even on a simple level, Monty, they need to at least innate, innate, engage a trade. They would not have got a dragon fight when we're talking about the earlier power spikes from the SKT comp. Bang has Trinity Force. Faker already went for about as much early power as possible with the Nashor's Rush. They wouldn't have been able to contest dragons, so at least they force a trade of some sort of resource. Right, and in the preferable way that will help them in the early and mid game, too. Before that 6%, AP and AD really starts to get working. And they already have it, remember, because they took the first yep. dragon, smartly stolen away from Wisdom, contesting Bengi's solo earlier this game. Well, still a long, long way to go for the Koo Tigers. Uh, you can see the QSS second, actually, on Bang this game, just trying to prioritize his ability to escape from the likes of Smeb, Wisdom, and Gorilla. Maybe not a bad idea. He's got to be able to be mobile so that he doesn't just get burst down by Cassidy and should he get hit by some crowd control. And there's not a lot of armor yet. Uh, Smeb really the only one with any armor to speak of. Ku and Wisdom going for just what I assume will be an Aegis. So Wisdom might be building one himself. Only just has the Ruby Crystal at this present point. It's the last outer turret. And SKT rotating around it. They want to break this outer ring of turrets. Okay, well, Faker can just keep moving up the mid lane just like he did last time, cover his flank with an Azir turret, keep the pressure on. The map pressure, it's symbolized in this mini map. Four pink wards on the map to zero from Ku Tigers. Well, that's exactly why I was concerned about this Cassidy pick. This is not the direction that I think the Ku Tigers should have gone with this draft. Certainly Kuro strong on this, but they, I don't think they saw the reason exactly why they were losing that last game. You just can't compete with how much heat pre, uh, Faker can put on the mid lane and how much of an effect that has. It just ripples outward across the rest of the map. They need Kuro to be able to answer it. And the champions that should always have teams trading advantages, for example, Fizz versus Maokai is what SKT opts into. That's a winning lane matchup for Fizz. So you feel like Ku should be able to, just with the nature of pick ban, get something of their own. And although Cassidy can be a winning lane matchup against uh, the Azir, we're talking about after a certain point in the game, after about, say, 10 to 15 minutes, that's the first 15 minutes of the game where SKT often win and lose their games, or in general this season, win them all. They want to go for Bang right here, but they don't really have the angle. Faker still there. TP coming in from SKT right behind them. They're going to dive. This Gorilla gets bounced around and nearly instantly killed. Bang pops the QSS to get out of the Timbers. Wisdom here on the side, but five members of SKT still diving this turret. Double kill for Faker. Marin going to fish himself another one. Wolf just standing there tanking the turret on the dive. Kuro there again too late. Faker 
with the priority on the rotation, gets to the turret, and they execute a very nice dive. And here comes the rest of it. Smed will fall. Kuro has nowhere to go as Fizz Marin completes the ace. Wow. Who getting out rotated in game one was their death. Now, specifically, that was when Cassiopeia had a turret taken down and Victor could walk as he pleases. Remember, this is a Cassidy getting out rotated by SKT. Map pressure, having those pink wards up, just made them so well and so easy to able to take a massive team fight victory. They get that last out of turret. Once again, they have everything. Yeah, look at this. I mean, just it takes so long for Gorilla to get the Tibbers, and he has to drop it on Bang, who already has the QSS. Yeah, Wisdom was in position, remember, anticipating a gank of their own from Ku. But SKT, they're everywhere at once, and they win easily. Yeah, they do. So just pulling out for a moment, they see Kuro. Smeb and Kuro absolutely cannot defend this 2v5. Uh, also, Smeb just doesn't have a lot of MR yet at this juncture, so he gets shredded by this Stinger and the Corky Rockets. I don't even know what Kuro was hoping for. Remember, he doesn't even have five points in Force Pulse at this point. He can't even hope to clear the wave, whatever his AP situation. So just donating more kills over to SKT. He's just astounding how much better SKT is than every other team in this league so far. Uh, there's, I mean, Koo Tigers, by their own right, had been on this 13-game win streak, but they are getting absolutely crushed in this best of three. Feels like every time we big up a contender to SKT. Ha, they're only pretenders. <laughs> they're only pretenders. They're chopped down every time. My last cast actually was SKT versus Jin at that. At the time was 1v2. SKT took that down, but of course we even had the cliff note. Koo's looking really good lately, and of course they went on a big winning streak since then. That's all right, SKT. KT's the next one. KT, we're we on the KT hype train, here we go. Straight to 0-2, <laughs> Phil. There's a reason why this team monopolizes the power rankings, also the global power rankings. This team, since oh, MSI. Oh, jeez. Well, Baron's already there after the solar flare lands and ignites. So Maran just going to go on a little bit of a chase right here. Wisdom just dies to the damage over time. Since MSI, they've been definitely keeping their roster a lot more consistent. Many more Faker games. Easy Hoon definitely been on the bench. Tom only been sin. Rarely sighted, absolutely. This starting lineup, though, very impressive. Well, you can see Kuro just struggling as against this, as you say, impressive lineup. And not even with the Zonias yet. Faker gets a Zonias of his own. Very interesting build. I'm going to have to do the math on this build after this game because I am just, I am very surprised about this Nasher's Tooth. Kuro came into this series with a higher KDA than Faker, but you can see how much that's really I meant am. this series. Yeah, Kuro was number three in the league. He was only behind Bang and Wolf in KDA. He was sitting at 6.9 prior to game one. Wolf and Bang were both at 8.2. I've been very impressed with Koro for the majority of this season. You know, after quite a poor performance in the LCK Finals last season, got blown away by Easy Hearn that time, but it feels like when he reaches this top, top opposition, just doesn't have an answer, and it feels like the champion picks certainly haven't helped him. Yeah, it, the picks, I think, were the really big part of this, this series, Papa Smithy, because we know Kuro has a pretty large champion pool. It's not like he can just play Victor or something like that. He does have other options. And with this last pick, he could have opted into. Remember, the Ezreal was available here. Certainly, that goes against the grain of what I was saying in terms of early game pressure. But he could have had a Varus, which could have done OK against the Azir, at least had some pokes, some harass, maybe done a little bit more, at least had more wave clear at the very least. But do you opt into a Varus when you've seen the Leona and you know the Fizz is there as well? It's risky to go for anything immovable, so then where are the options? What's left? He went with the cast and it has the laning matchup, but you discount the fact that we're talking about Bengi on Rek'Sai. We're talking about this jungle mismatch, and Bengi's around the game again. Yeah. I also wonder what would have happened with an Echo instead of this Evelyn. Even though Wisdom has had very good Evelyn games, uh, it seems like it just hasn't given him enough versatility. This man's all alone. That's a bit of combat. It's not going to mean much. The rest of the team is backing away. Kuz? Funneled into a choke against Faker. And that means Kuro just has to run basically out of the fight right now. Smeb somehow gets away. Prey may not be so lucky with the chilling smite on him. He's going to be zipping away, but that's a kill for Bengi. And Kuro falling back to the base. Wisdom dying once again to the damage over time from Fizz. 
creating a very beautiful corpse inside his own base. And SK Telecom has the chance just to turn onto this Baron and win the game. And they give away picks that have really rocked other teams. Remember, Wisdom's uh, Evelyn against CJ enters basically solo one game two off the bat of back of his own ganking pressure. Smash's going to teleport through, but this is going to be a titanic requirement to stop this Baron. Well, it's not going to be enough. SKT easily turn on to him, but it was a desperate play to prevent this Baron from going down at an 11k gold deficit here at 25 minutes. SKT secure the Baron, just back out. This feels like KDA stats, win rates, just don't mean much when you're playing against an SK Telecom team. In game one, we talked about the fact that Ku, you know, their, their big, their macro strategies were very good. They made a couple of small mistakes. They probably made more mistakes here, but the results almost identical game on game. Yeah. Yeah, well, Wisdom just getting chased out of his own jungle. Everyone very under-itemized at the moment. Marin going for the Blade of the Rune King. Didn't pick up that item last game, actually. Went more tanky and then into a wit's end. But this time, he wants that split push. He's much more confident this game about winning versus that Maokai than he could have been in the last one. Felt like he defaulted to tank items after he kind of fell behind in terms of gold compared to Smeb, who was picking up kills and was competitive in CS. Certainly not competitive in CS. 80 CS advantage here for the Fizz. We're going to see Banky take a lot of damage. Yeah, gets caught out, but Smeb landed the Solar Flare on right on his head. Kuro gets pushed out, has to zone use immediately. Faker zone using under the turret as well. Faker going to fall, actually. It was a little bit too deep as Prey picks up the kill streak on him. But that is going to be, it looks like enough of a defense, at least for the moment. Smeb coming back up with his home guards in about 15 seconds should be just enough for Ku to hold on to their inhibitor turret and prevent SK Telecom from cracking the base. Yeah, Bang was guarding the barren up cannon minion with his life, but eventually had to relent because of the respawn timers. So they're not able to break the outer turret in the mid lane, but Marin's gonna keep piling on the gold. Play the Rune King finished, and I guess it's gonna be the Frozen Heart third this time. Yeah, third instead of second. I guess that's sufficient for his tankiness. Well, Ku, at least they're the bright side is they're not really going to be threatening any kind of fifth dragon anytime in the near future. So SKT can just, they've got at least a small, extraordinarily small chance to defend, but realistically SKT could just dive pretty much at any point. And is this the time when we start reevaluating Marin as a player and you're ranking on Marin in terms of the power top laners in champions? We talked about the likes of his opponent today, Smeb, Someday, and Duke as really, uh, the top top laners and now that he's showing a carry champion like this and you can't disagree it's played the ruin king trinity force he's showing that he has the carry potential to go with his very uh very strong tank role play with the likes of rumble and malcolm yeah he's certainly diversifying in a very scary way and the rumble also not really it was banned in game one of this series but something that people are very concerned with spev gets locked up by the solar flare he is dead instantaneously Wisdom, the next to fall in the front line, Marin goes, but Mount, Face of the Mountain actually going to save him from the Ignite, popped by Gorilla. So that is one more member of SKT left alive. He's just going to recall, come right back in as soon as he's able to cross the map with his home guard boots. And here is a devastating siege incoming from SK Telecom. We're gonna see Bang just freely autoing. Fizz doesn't have teleport, so can't be there instantly. Nine seconds for Smeb and Wisdom to come back means the game probably won't end here, but just the way we've been speaking, it's kind of been over for about a good 10 minutes. Yes, yes it has been. These games have been very quick and really the only team to give SK Telecom a run for their money, at least out of the top six teams in Korea, has been Jin Air. They nearly won that game two a few weeks ago. Uh, didn't do so well in the rematch of that series, but this is one hurdle and probably the biggest one for their undefeated season. It's a crazy scene where what they'll go 13 and 0 after this series. The only team to really give them a run for the money in a series is probably Samsung. They probably had the best series against <laughs> SKT and that's a crazy thing to think about and you can of course question how seriously SKT were taking that series. Speaking of serious, wisdom is very dead. Jeez, that damage coming out of Marin is absolutely massive. Handing a red buff to him, just to add that little more true damage to put him over the top. And now, 
SKT do not need any help to be put over the top. They're definitely the John Cena <laughs> of this league. They just do a lot of winning. They very rarely lose. And when they lose, pretty questionable. All right, Varn caught out by a timber. Is Willie actually fall? No. We see the Emperor's of Might coming through defensively. Smep tries to go in, but he falls. They get Faker with some burst, but not before losing the Maokai. And they can just keep on pushing right here. They still have the Corky to apply the damage to the turret. They don't even have a minion wave prepped. In fact, there's a minion wave pressing against them in the top lane, but it doesn't matter when you're so far ahead. 16,000 gold at 30. here's the TP. Marin just showing right back up. He's on top of the turret already, going back to dive prey in the back line, forcing everybody off, giving Bang some more time. There's a fish, and there is a dead fish also. Wow, Marin, maybe getting a little bit too greedy. A different game where they weren't so far ahead. The fact that they've been really neglecting their minion waves, the fact that there is great scaling towards the late game would be comfort for Kua. Smep actually activates his home guards, but not going to get anywhere near SKT. No, he is not. Well, uh, we have officially passed the flame horizon for Mar in this game at the 30 minute mark. He is 100 CS over Smeb's Maokai. And I, I question also the wisdom. You know what's so scary about Marin uh -huh. is that if you don't ban the Fizz, you're in trouble. Because the problem with Marin is if you if you leave both Maokai and Fizz up, well, we've seen he is undefeated professionally on Fizz, and he only plays it into this matchup. Yep. So you have to be worried about that. But if you if you don't take Maokai, he's 23 and one on Maokai. So he seems to just own whatever side of these two champions you get on. And how, how do you stop that unless you actually spend a ban on his pocket fizz? And then who knows what SKT is going to get at that point? Are they going to get, especially when you're on red side, are they going to get Callista? Are they going to get Alistair? I mean, it's a lot of possibilities that you don't want to consider. And how about this happy scenario? You ban away both, and then he's uh, he's pretty good at that rumble character. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if you've heard of that one, but I feel like Marin might have uh, played that a few times as well. Yeah, exactly. It's very difficult to handle SKT in a draft these days. More bands, please, Rita. <laughs> so Wisdom's in a really nice flank All spot All right, here. they're going to go for it, but Bang just going to Valk over the wall. Bengi gets caught early. Smeb on top of him with that twisted advance, and they're actually going to turn this around. Baker uses the Emperor's Divide. There are the rockets coming in, but the cleanup from Bang. He's free autoing just behind the wall, and Smeb gets onto Bang, but there's the QSS once again, and a double kill from Bang, who is just so protected. Triple kill, quadra kill, and are they going to get the Penta? Marin wants to hand it over. Gorilla gonna get fished. Gorilla gonna get the Penta, Penta kill. for Bang. That is SK Telecom's first Penta of the season. They are answering it, our second Penta in the last couple of days, and Bang just handed that one on a silver platter. Ku was doing everything they could. They had to engage, they had to play aggressively. They tried, but Faker's wall made it so Bang just had free auto attacks, and that'll be the game. SK Telecom defeats the Ku Tigers 2-0. They extend their game win streak to 17. They extend their best of three win streak to a shocking 20 here as they look to complete this season undefeated. And they are only one series against KT away from locking up world's qualification. This SK Telecom T1 comp, even having the cherry on the top, giving Bang that Penta, got everything they wanted here today. Well, I thought it would be closer than this, Papa Smithy. I thought SKT would win, but I didn't think it would be so incredibly decisive in a 2-0 fashion. And there's just no excuses. You can look back